little pre-film. Pre-film, I'm gonna read a pre-film introduction. And okay. we'll jump into asking you some questions about Straighten Up and Fly Right. Uh, my name is Ben Edwards, and I'm honored to welcome you, the filmmakers of Straighten Up and Fly Right. We're so grateful to have this wonderful film at the eighth annual Bentonville Film Festival. Before we begin, on behalf of the festival, I would like to take the time to acknowledge indigenous peoples, including the Osage, Caddo, Quapaw nations that were forced to leave their ancestral lands here in Northwest Arkansas. We further recognize that a portion of the Trail of Tears runs through this area and that the Cherokee, Choctaw, Muscogee, Creek, Chickasaw, and Seminole nations passed through what is now Arkansas and Benton County during this forced removal. We acknowledge all indigenous storytellers storytellers and residents in our community and region. So thank you for being here. Jump back over. Oh, okay. All right. So All right. <laughs> the film Straighten Up and Fly Right is, right. is one story uh, about a topic which I'm not sure there are enough, um, I'm, I'm, I'm positive there's not enough <laughs> conversations about because in fact, it is invisible, right? And, and, and those that live with different invisible disabilities. Right. So for me, every one of those stories is very important. And I'm thankful again, that you brought this film to our festival. And if you would, Tell just briefly a little bit about your own personal invisible uh, disability. Um, well, uh, I'd like to say I'm a good actor, but I'm, the, the uh, ankylosing spondylitis was not acting, that's for real. And I've had that since I was 11. And um, I've always included uh, physically disabled characters in my stories, but I never featured them. And uh, it just so happens when um, Donald Trump was making fun of the New York Times reporter at the press conference I was watching that day and I got pissed off and I'm going, I'm gonna write about this, I'm gonna do something. And I started writing about it. And of course, like all things, it turned into nothing about that. and turned into this movie and it turned into, yes, about ankylosing spondylitis, but about, you know, relationships and, you know, and, 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 and being out in the world in loneliness. And so uh, it was both my and Kristen's story combined. So if Kristen wants to add a few words, yeah, well, I guess going on the theme of in, invisible um, and how that sort of was a really important piece of this film. And also, you know, Stephen has a very visible disability, but <laughs> yeah, you know. I wish but, I was invisible sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think we've, yeah, I think you've said that before. Um, yet, you know, uh, walking on the streets, whether people are staring or not, you know, I think um, the able-bodied world doesn't have the same experience and understanding of what that what that's like to go through a city that doesn't see you, that doesn't have, uh, you know, the right accessibility. So, in a sense, you know, disability disability is treated as like this invisible thing, and if we just don't deal with it, it doesn't exist. Um, so, you know, the characters in the film really sort of are living in that, and you're watching them go through a city and through a world that treats them in that way. Um, somebody like myself who's, who's lived with depression and anxiety for a very long time, which it in and of itself is a sort of invisible thing, um, was something and that we wanted to make. Both, yeah, and right. Both they're visible at times, yes. That's right, yeah. And so, you know, that the sort of theme of visibility and invisibility and how those two things are really these two lines that happen in the film um, simultaneously while this one character who's going through a very difficult time, not only just with her body, but with herself and not wanting to be visible, but meeting 
Stephen's character who thrusts her into a world where she is visible. And that's sort of where a lot of the healing comes from and where the sense of community comes from, which is very true to Stephen and I's story and relationship as a sort of mentor, mentee, sort of chosen family that we helped each other out of our own loneliness and our, our own isolations, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic <laughs> isolations. And, um, and we hope, yeah, that, that sort of the idea of invisibility um, sort of minimizes because we realize that our, our ability to become visible is through the power of our community and our relationships. And making your own community. Well, and I guess that is something very important to learn. Uh, you know, I too have an invisible disability. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> mine is a little bit trickier to explain because it could be triggering for some, but long and short, my head only moves up and down. I'll only nod mm -hmm. when the questions. I don't have any range of motion really left or right yeah. because right. the multiple final fusion that I have to live with and from behind. and you know uh no one sees that you know I haven't even seen mm -hmm. really the scar itself because it's all behind me if you will mm -hmm. but many of the invisible uh disabilities I know comes pain and pain in and of itself can become very challenging especially when you're on a film schedule <laughs> so what <laughs> were the biggest challenges as you were making this film well, you know, obviously the, there's a challenge that everybody has, which is money, you know, but we came up with a system that we thought was workable where we were working with our uh, producers and uh, cinematographer and um, sound, sound person who are also our good friends from Mexico. And so we were gonna work once a month, one weekend once a month until we were done. The only, pro the only <laughs> problem with that is we got pretty close to being finished, but I unfortunately had a stroke followed by a broken neck, followed by a heart attack. So that's why this film took six years to make. Well, yeah. yeah. Certainly understand the time it takes to recover from the second thing you mentioned. <laughs> so <laughs> it is, uh, uh, wow, wow. Sounds yeah. like you stayed pretty well on track considering the opposite. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, well, I, I, according good... to the physician death, desk reference, I ran out of diseases. So, you know, no, nothing left. Yeah, I, that was probably the biggest challenge making the film, to be honest, <laughs> you know, because we really as a team, uh, you know, Stephen and I already had such an established relationship and Armando Croda and Lindsay Cordero and Rodrigo Vogel. We also had a relationship with them um, there. They were the producers, camera, sound and assistant camera. And so you can imagine if we had worked with anybody else and we didn't have these established relationships, having a stroke, breaking your neck and having a heart attack in the middle of filming would probably put an end to that film. There would be no way to go on. And so because we had already shot enough and we kind of had a roadmap already, we were able to sort of navigate and balance this health crisis as a team to make sure that we saw the film through. Um, but it also informed the rest of how the film would play out because- We got a chance to um, assess, reassess the material. Yeah, and make sure that we were really, you know, after having gone through all of that collectively, that our film somehow represented this sort of deeper experience that we were going through, which was, you know, our relationships are the most important thing. And, you know, we're very, we're just very lucky that we get to make films because of it, um, yeah. Well, what's next? Are there other <laughs> stories, films that do either of you of are? Course. <laughs> yes. Um, I, in the early nineties, I taught at Rikers Island, which if you know, is the, uh, the um, correctional facility in New York City that houses 18,000 inmates. And at that time, just like 91, they opened a, 
um, a facility for inmates with full blown AIDS. And they couldn't get anybody to teach there. So I ended up teaching there and I was there for a year. And um, at, when I was done with that, about a year or two later, I wrote a script, which nobody wanted to touch with a 10 foot pole back then. And, uh, you know, I think people thought they would get AIDS just from reading the script. I, uh, I did, yeah. so probably. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe now is the time to uh, resuscitate that. On time. Oh, that <laughs> horrible chapter in yeah. response to that epidemic. Exactly. No, yes. no reason. Only, only hatred. There are yeah, and fear of, and fear. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure. Hopefully, there are moments there that you can recapture of, you know, hope <laughs> and yeah, no, joy. Yeah. But you know, otherwise, no. That's changed my life. I can see why. I, I can only imagine how. <laughs> yeah. and, and I really feel strongly this film experience has been so transforming with Kristen and Armando and Lindsay. Unbelievable, the people we've met. And yesterday I was at a, a meeting for uh, ankylosing spondylitis, the, uh, you know, the medical society. And I was talking to all sorts of people with ankylosing spondylitis, which I never have in my life. I'm, I'm 62 years old and I've never spoken to anyone who had it. And so I, you know, I can't follow this movie with a romantic comedy. It's just <laughs> not, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I even maybe the next one you. after that. <laughs> next one after that, maybe. Yeah, and, and you know, I think Stephen, you know, how we met, yeah, it was through this dance and acting program, and he Which taught I was me teaching her at the same time I was teaching the inmates. That was very yeah. interesting. I remember that yeah. last night when I was talking to the people. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Well, huh. that, that makes perfect. That also makes perfect sense because in the class that we had with Stephen, he was teaching us how to write our own sort of stories and tell our own stories and we were I think maybe 10 and learning how to mine our lives for funny bits or you know um, painful moments in our life that we'd like to examine and share with an audience and so it's just really cool to kind of be in this full circle moment and realize that you know Stephen and I have created something so awesome together in in the spirit of the film is about finding your voice and using that to bring people in closer and to and to share uh, an experience together. And um, you know, but so it I all hope that back to those early days. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's that it's yeah, that, that well, yeah, it's, so it circles back to those early days. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's How definitely <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, it's just cool to be on this side of it together, um, you know, and and be sharing this film and thinking about what's next and how to tell how to keep telling stories that, you know, move people and and explore areas that you know previously hadn't been explored or or shown, and it's right. just really cool the response that we're getting from co different communities, different age groups, people all over the world, like reaching out to us saying, "I've never seen this on screen before. I've never seen myself on screen before," or Wow, right. this just makes me think so much more about what somebody else is going through, and I should be more mindful, you know. And even that in it's itself is, is a really cool thing to hear. It's a very cool thing to hear, I mean, especially yeah. people with ankylosing spondylitis said, "I've never heard this before." You know, I, I this is my story. You must get it out because it's not only about us; it's about other people. It's about everybody. Yeah. You know, and you know, I think as Kristen said many times. Um, you know, you may not enter this world disabled, but you probably leave it disabled. Yeah, yeah. And that's something I, you know, I really hope that people start paying attention to for themselves because our lives can change in an instant. And, you know, yeah. And the world is really just not designed and set up for people that experience the world differently than the norm. You know, like traveling, 
you <laughs> see how hotels just don't think about it. And even in ADA rooms, they're not fully ADA and it is completely maddening. Trust me, and you don't want to you you don't, you don't through, wanna go you through understand. airport security if you're disabled. <sighs> yeah, the world is just not designed for it. And, you know, but it's just sad to say because we're all going eventually to not have the same mobility that we had. Our bodies are gonna break down sooner. Some maybe get later, but you know, and so if we're not designing a world where people are being represented and people have accessibility and people can travel and get around in the world, what are we really doing? You know, what, who are we serving? So yeah, it's just an interesting thing that, you know. I very much believe if you aren't starting your whatever project film program building whatever you're making if you don't start from the point of how will this be accessed by everyone yeah then right. you're, you're building it for a select few and then so you're already segregating and you're already leaving some out and so that's that completely that, that's that's not for me <laughs> i like yeah. but it is for you it's for everybody has the ability to access and experience as similarly as we can mm -hmm. not as only can, yeah but also to in to go that extra mile so others can ex have the full experience whenever they attend or whenever they see a story on right. camera. <laughs> well, so I thought it was interesting through the pandemic that we had all the streaming accessibility. And I, you know, for people who already are, you know, leaving the house, if, if you're disabled, it, you know, you might need to have to take a taxi. You have to know the venue. You have to know if things are accessible or not. And not every website posts what kind of seating is there. Are is there an elevator? Are there stairs? Like all the questions and things you have to think about. And so I thought it was really fascinating that festivals moved in the in the virtual way, right? And so like, how do we keep that going so that there there is that accessibility and like people can still join events and things like that without it being this like it was a one time only deal and now we're going back to how it was. You know, no. like I, yeah. I think that, yes, Ben mm -hmm. Wilhelm realized immediately, obviously, this is yeah. a no brainer forever. <laughs> forever. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's actually that's amazing. Great. And I, yeah. And it, it, I'm really happy to hear it. Yeah. So many tools just appeared all of a sudden, you know, yeah. when, <laughs> when everybody needed them. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden now, they were there. I know, it's so convenient. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Well, we're really happy to be part of Bentonville. Um, you know, just everything that the festival stands for. And of course, you know, the work that Gina Davis has been doing and accessibility, inclusivity, women, you know, everything. It's just like, it's so cool to be here with you guys with this film and, um, you know, get to celebrate the good side of, you know, what all of this means, whether it means a disability or able body or whatever the word we want to use for it. The fundamental thing is that we all just want to be connected to each other in the best way that we can. Well, anything else here? We can, <laughs> can wrap, unless you have anything else to add. I no, yeah, thank just you thank, you. thank you. We're really, you yeah, we're so. Whoa. Sounds like a Daft <laughs> Punk song. <laughs> I was like, oh, Cindy, are you still with us? <laughs> I, I hope that made it into the recording. It was pretty amazing. My LSD just kicked in. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, Whoa. continuity. You'll have to deal with that. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. no, no, literally. I found <laughs> Pulled off the trail. I'm ready and I'm going to catch back with him. But it was so nice to talk to both of you. Thank, thank you. So thank much you. And taking... thank you so much for having our film. We really appreciate it. And, and we can't wait to be there.